Boral produces and distributes a broad range of construction materials, including quarry products, cement, fly ash, pre-mixed concrete and asphalt, and building products, including clay bricks and pavers, clay and concrete roof tiles, concrete masonry products, and plasterboard and timber. Boral primarily serves customers in the building and construction industries with operations concentrated in three key geographical markets, Australia, the USA, and Asia. Discussed during each brick and heavy clay short course taught at the National Brick Research Center is the brick plant of the future. The need for automation, one kiln schedule, computer controls, and faster, more efficient firing was emphasized. All of these features have been addressed by Boral Bricks in the plant at Union City, Oklahoma. And with the addition of methane gas from the landfill in late 2006, the operation took another step toward becoming one of the best examples of how the industry should prepare for the future. Hello and welcome to Boral Bricks. North America's leader in the sustainable production of beautiful and durable clay bricks. You can select solid colors, color ranges, bricks that are made to look antique, bricks that are sharp and crisp, and added colored mortars and brick shapes for architectural interest to complete the picture. Boral Bricks in Union City, Oklahoma manufactures one size of brick. This brick is the Western King size. These bricks are made primarily for the residential market in a variety of antique colors. Boral bricks are the leading choice of bricks because of four main things. Durability, low maintenance, energy efficiency, and resale value. Boral bricks produces the best, most durable bricks in the world. We are so sure our bricks will hold up that we guarantee our bricks will last at least two lifetimes. When you're building a new home, you can choose from a variety of exterior sidings, stucco, cement-based siding, and wood composite siding, but none can match the beauty and long-term durability of boral bricks. Boral bricks are also low maintenance and don't require unnecessary painting or patching. Safety is our number one priority here at Boral Bricks. That is why we are a voluntary protection program company. OSHA's VPP recognizes employers and workers in the private industry and federal agencies who have implemented effective safety and health management systems and maintain injury and illness rates below National Bureau of Labor Statistics averages for their respective industries. In VPP, management, labor, and OSHA work cooperatively and proactively to prevent fatalities, injuries, and illnesses through a system focused on hazard prevention and control, worksite analysis, training, and management commitment and worker involvement. The last portion of this film is focused on safety orientation, since safety is our number one focus. Here we will talk about emergency evacuation routes and severe weather, work area hazards, accident protocol, Personal protective equipment. Housekeeping. First aid kits and AEDs. Hazard communication. Energy isolation. Bloodborne pathogens. Slips, trips, and falls. Mobile equipment. Behavioral accident prevention process. Hearing conservation. Respiratory protection. Safe lifting. Workplace violence. Accident and injury reporting, sexual harassment, loose clothing, long hair and jewelry, and invisible planes. In case of an emergency, you will hear a long blast of the emergency alarm and you need to make your way calmly to the closest exit and evacuate across to the meeting point on Choctaw Road. In case of a tornado, you will hear a series of short blasts of the emergency alarm 
This is severe weather alarm and you need to make your way to the proper storm shelter assigned to you. There are three storm shelters. Two are located on the west side of the plant and one is at the very front by the shipping office. Hazards in your work area. Mechanical, moving equipment, mobile power equipment. Chemical, such as paint stripper or hydrochloric acid. Environmental, hot environment and cold environment. Mobile, such as forklifts or trucks. Behavioral, no horseplay on the work floor. In the case of any accident, notify your supervisor. An accident is an unexpected and unintentional event in which injury or damage occurs. Accidents can be avoided if safe working practices and procedures are observed. All accidents, incidents, and near misses must be reported immediately to your supervisor even if they do not result in injury or damage. In the event of injury, medical treatment must be obtained. Failure to report and obtain treatment in a timely manner could lead to complications of the injury and possible delay in the acceptance of a compensation claim. Personal protective equipment. Hard hat. Eye protection. Earplugs. Steel toe boots. Housekeeping. The five S's. Standardize. Straighten. Sort. Sweep. Sustain. Poor housekeeping in your work area can be a source of injury to yourself and others. Trips, slips, and falls can result from poor housekeeping. Housekeeping means order as well as cleanliness. All tools and equipment not in use should be safely stored and all scraps and waste materials removed. First Aid There are first aid kits in this plant. The first one is located in the break room downstairs. The second one is located in the shipping office at the front of the plant. The entire management team and some additional team members are trained in AED and CPR. If you see someone needing CPR or an AED, please contact your supervisor immediately. Hazard Communication Material safety data sheets are located underneath the stairway. An MSDS are provided for every type of product and chemical used here at Boral Bricks, and it explains what is in the chemical, how to react if inhaled, swallowed, or if you get it in your eyes, and where the product came from. Chemical labeling is another way to implement hazard communication. Each chemical has its own label with a description on it. Chemicals need to be stored in their proper place, such as a chemical cabinet marked with Flammable, keep fire away. Energy isolation, lockout, tagout. The control of hazardous energy, or lockout, tagout, is designed to protect employees from injury while carrying out repairs and maintenance on machinery and equipment. Advanced training is needed to perform lockout, tagout. Employee Guidelines Everyone has or will receive a copy of the Boral Employee Guidebook. This guidebook covers all employee guidelines. Blood-Borne Pathogens If you encounter blood, don't try to clean it up. Contact your supervisor. Blood can contain many different diseases such as HIV, hepatitis A, B, and C, or even AIDS. Slips, trips, and falls. Slips, trips, and falls are the number one cause of injury here at Boral Bricks. There are a few main guidelines to follow to prevent these mistakes such as 
always use three-point contact. This means use the stair rail with at least one hand if you are carrying something. Use both hands if your hands are empty for extra support. Wear shoes that have good grip so that you have a better chance of not slipping. Clean up spills immediately before someone trips and falls. Follow the guidelines of the five S's to maintain a clean and debris-free environment. Don't rush through work, slow down and make sure you do it safely. Mobile powered equipment. Forklifts, front end loaders, and trucks can also be a hazard. They are always being used around the plant and the drivers don't always see you. Mobile powered equipment has blind spots, so it is always a safe practice to make sure the driver sees you before walking in front of, behind, or to the side of these vehicles. Behavioral Accident Prevention Process Employees observe other employees while working to eliminate and correct unsafe behaviors. BAPP is a no-name, no-blame process to correct unsafe behaviors and actions by coworkers. Further training at the plant level will be provided to complete observations. Everyone is eligible to be observed on the Boral property. Permit Required Confined Space Here at Boral we have confined spaces that you have to have a permit and be trained to enter. Confined spaces have a numerous amount of hazards including energy hazards, noise, falling objects, critters, psychological, oxygen deficiency, toxic gases, flammable and explosive, the configuration of the space, such as sloping walls, loose debris, and sharp edges. Hearing Conservation Hearing protection is a must-have in most factories, but Borel's noise level is below the required level to need hearing protection, and therefore it is not currently required PPE. If you feel the need for hearing protection, it is available at any time. Just talk to your supervisor about it. Respiratory protection. Even though Boral is one of the largest manufacturers of bricks, we keep our air and our workspaces clean. We keep our air quality up to standards and we are currently not required to wear respirators. Safe lifting. Keep the back straight and neutral. Do not arch or round the back. Keep the feet a little wider than shoulder width apart to help your balance. Push the buttocks backwards as you tilt forward from the hips. Do not round your back. Bend your knees, keeping your feet flat on the ground. Your knees should not extend beyond your toes. The buttocks must travel backward to achieve this. Your body can be tilted forward slightly as long as you keep the back straight not rounded. Tilt forward from the hip joints, not the waist. Hold the object close to the body. Tense abdomen before lifting. Contract your buttocks and return to standing position. Keep the muscles used in lifting with the legs strong with the squat exercise. Lift slowly. If you can't lift slowly, the object is too heavy for you and you should not be lifting it. Though lifting with the legs prevents injury to the back, you may strain your knee joints when lifting the object too heavy for you. Ask for help. If you need to turn, move your feet. Do not twist your back. Carrying objects. When carrying heavy objects, use both hands to distribute the weight evenly and keep the object close to your body. If the object is too heavy for you, ask the assistance and or use a dolly. If you have to choose between pushing and pulling an object, choose pushing. Pushing an object allows you to use your leg muscles to help move the object. If you have knee problems, keep in mind that pushing a heavy object may strain the knees. 
Workplace Violence Workplace violence is violence and or hostility or threat of violence against workers. It can occur at or outside the workplace and can range from verbal abuse to physical assault. There are four types of workplace violence, bullying, threats, harassment, and assaults. Warning signs. Disruptive, prevents normal work functions or activities. Threatening, physical actions short of actual contact or injury. Violent behavior, physical assault with or without weapons. Notice warning signs. Take action to minimize the risk and know that there is a zero tolerance policy. Report anything you see that is considered workplace violence to your supervisor. Accident and or injury reporting. Immediately report all injuries, no matter how minor, to your supervisor. Reporting injuries is both your right and your responsibility. It ensures prompt medical care for the injured person if it's needed. You have a right to work in a safe and healthy environment, but workplaces are not perfect. Report all near misses. A near miss is a non-injury incident. We've all experienced them at one time or another. A safe working environment is everyone's responsibility. Sexual harassment. It is unlawful to harass a person because of that person's sex. Harassment can include sexual harassment or unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical harassment of a sexual nature. Harassment does not have to be of a sexual nature, however, can include offensive remarks about a person's sex. For example, it is illegal to harass a woman by making offensive comments about women in general. Both victim and the harasser can be either a woman or a man, and the victim and harasser can be the same sex. Although the law doesn't prohibit simple teasing, offhand comments, or isolated incidences that are not very serious, harassment is illegal when it is so frequent or severe that it creates a hostile or offensive work environment or when it results in an adverse employment decision, such as the victim being fired or demoted. The harasser can be the victim's supervisor, a supervisor in another area, a coworker, or someone who is not an employee of the employer, such as a client or customer. Loose clothing, long hair, gloves, and jewelry. Wear close fitted clothing, Tuck in your shirt and absolutely no hoodies. Do not wear gloves when working near rotating shafts or other moving machinery parts. Wear long hair in a bun, tie it back or cover it with your hard hat. Do not wear jewelry at work. All of these things can get caught in moving machines or parts and once they catch onto something, they aren't going to let go. Invisible planes. When working around the machines, be aware of the invisible planes. Invisible planes at Borel are the belts that carry the material to the different processes. We have installed safety chains under these belts, but you still need to be alert around these moving parts. That concludes our video for today. Thank you for choosing Borel. Don't forget, safety is always number one with Borel bricks and someone expects you home tonight. For the last 40 years, I've been involved one way or the other with safety in industrial settings. Personally, uh, it, it has a lot of meaning to me. Uh, it goes well beyond my experience uh, in, in the workplace. Uh, growing up, uh, I grew up in a working class family in, in the U.S., in New York, actually. Uh, my father was a truck driver. My grandfather was a, a master mechanic. And, uh, and he had had an industrial accident in the 20s that, that uh, cut off the fingers in both of his hands and in, in partial, you know, sort of a slicing type of a cut um, because they didn't have lockout tagout in the workplace where he was, he was working. 
And I, as a child, I first encountered that and had a lot of questions for him, and I learned the story of, of his accident. And that gave me a particular insight in the impact it could have an individual. He had to learn how to, how to eat again. He had to learn how to, he was, since he was a mechanic, he had to learn to use his tools with much more limited uh, hand grasp than he'd had prior to that accident in the 1920s. Uh, so that was my first awareness of this whole issue of industrial safety. We're on the march to getting to world-class safety, which is the only place we should be. You know, stopping where we are or, or deciding that we've, got, we've done well enough is completely unacceptable because I actually think that a good, safe operation is a much more efficient operation and I think it plays to all our strengths in improving the organization and that's why we're doing it.